I love making these DMEC videos. And one of the reasons why I love making them is that most of the time the videos are super fun. You know, you've got some complicated eye or even a normal eye. And there is a very quick, nice little video that shows this beautiful, elegant little operation. And those are fun to do. They're fun to share. But you know, the reason I started making these videos for myself years ago to, was to evaluate the things during the surgery that didn't feel right, that didn't seem like they went right, that seemed like they were inelegant or sloppy or could have been done better. And, you know, it's something I still do every video, every case that I do, I watch the video and I make notes on things that could have been done better. And I want to show you an operation we did in the office just a month ago that I think has got some teaching points for things that could have been done better. Now, this is a complicated eye. This is a patient that has a failed previous PK and the cornea is edematous. There is some kind of IOL in this eye, but it is grossly dislocated. And the whole thing is cocooned up in this fibrous tissue that makes the anatomy difficult to discern. So this is an operation in which we're going to try to refixate the patient's existing IOL or put a new lens in the eye and then also rehabilitate their cornea with a DMEC. The way that I'm starting is by making pyridomies nasally and temporally. And um, then we'll achieve a little hemostasis as much as we can with a local cautery. I'm trying to reform the anterior chamber now. I make a few little paracentesis, and that's a cyclodialysis spatula I'm insinuating around. And what's not obvious here is there's very little, if any, anterior chamber. There's just this membrane that is encasing everything in the middle port of the eye and it's wrapped up against the cornea and the IOL is somehow involved and it is tenaciously strong. So I'm trying to strip it free with coaxial forceps and dissect it off, but eventually I have to get intraocular scissors to cut through this retrocorneal membrane which is wrapped up in all of the structures in the middle part of the eye. And this takes me forever. This is a highly edited video because I spend an hour stripping all of this crap out of the eye. And at some point here, I engage part of the lens, the haptic breaks off, then I have to remove the optic from the eye. And then finally here, we have got something maybe that we can work with once all this fibrous tissue is removed from the eye. A vitrectomy is done by me. That's not shown here. But anyway, there is enormous amount of fooling and fiddling with the eye to clean up this part of the eye to figure out what's going on. The next step, of course, is to put a new lens inside the eye. I like to use the glued eye well technique for that preferentially. I'm dissecting these partial thickness scleral flaps, which is more difficult than it should be because the eye is soft. I've had to make all of these incisions. The eye is soft and floppy because of all of these wounds on the eye. And that's why the eye is sort of caving in. It's indenting. And that makes making these flaps much more difficult. If I had to do this operation again, I would not do a combined glued IOL with DMEC. I would just do the DMEC, excuse me, just the glued IOL and do the DMEC later because this eye has got all these wounds. The eye is soft. It makes graft unfolding much more difficult. The glued eye well has been described many times before. Basically, you insinuate a three-piece lens in the eye. You pull the haptics out through sclerostomies 180 degrees apart, and you tuck them into partial thickness scleral tunnels dissected with a 26-gauge needle. So here we are using that 26-gauge needle, and I'll just use a curved tie to tuck that haptic in. It's super quick. It's super easy. It can be done even with very limited to no visibility. You don't have to use glue. We're not using glue in this case. We just suture up the sclerostomies and suture up the conjunctiva. So you don't have to have to seal glue if you want to use the glued eye well. That is an unnecessary component of the operation. You'll also notice that I put a few, in, a few stitches in my previous main wound, which was off to my right. Uh, the reason is that I'm preferentially a left-handed surgeon. I like to use my left hand as my dominant hand. And I know this is going to be a complicated graft unfolding process because the eye is hypotenuse with hypotony nothing acts right. Your normal manipulations aren't transmitted down into the eye as they should be. And the great fear is losing the graft into the back of the eye. If you have a hypotenuse eye, that graft can get sucked down into the back of the eye. So consequently, uh, I'm very worried about the chamber stability and I want to unfold the graft 
as adeptly as possible. So I want to set myself up for success by putting my main wound, which is the primary weapon in my armamentarium for unfolding the graft, over where my dominant hand sits. So here we go, we'll inject the graft. I'm avoiding the pupillary aperture. I'm pointing the graft away and I'm injecting it into the angle so I don't accidentally lose it into the back of the eye. So the graft still wants to reflux here out of the eye just because of all this fibrotic crap up around um, the patient's iris remnants, but that's okay. I just poke the graft back into the eye. I'll put a little fluid and a few little subtle taps on the surface of the cornea, and now I'm checking the orientation sign. That's with the Motsuro sign. I'm using the cannula to poke it over and to interact with the edge of the graft over there. And you'll notice the tip of the cannula turns blue, and then I perform the help yourself maneuver, which is to say, when I'm checking the orientation, while I'm there, I just help myself. I just poke the graft over and open with that cannula. That's a very effective technique for quickly unfolding a DMAC graft that uh, is not no touch. It does involve a little bit of a touch in the eye, but I think that the primary benefit with DMAC. When you're doing surgery, what you really want to do is unfold the graft quickly. You don't want to be screwing around with it forever, obsessing over a no-touch technique. You want to do whatever is the quickest and most efficient way to minimize the surgical time. The graft is a little bit inferiorly decentered, and so I'm going to use what my favorite one of my favorite tricks. I'm going to try to grab the edge of the graft with these coaxial forceps and pull it over here towards me. I'm going to try to pull it up where I can get it a little bit easier. I'm having trouble engaging this tissue, however, because a problem that I made with the wound. This wound made for my dominant hand, the problem is, is that uh, I made it when the eye was soft. And as a result, the wound is long. It's way longer than it should be. So I'm trying to grab the graft and drag it over, but the wound is so long, I'm having difficulty engaging the graft and pulling it towards me because I'm bumping into the edge of the wound. And now the graft looks like it wants to dislocate down back behind the pupil. So I don't want that to happen. That is the thing that will kill the operation. So I reach in, I grab the graft, and I drag it up on top of that iris or that fibrotic remnant of the iris where I'm not going to lose it inside of the eye. And now I'm thinking about what can I do. So the first thing I try is I try the help yourself technique again. And I'm struggling here. I'm thinking about what can I do to unfold the graft. It is constantly threatening to drop down around where the IOL is. Now you'll notice I'm protected in a relative sense because that IOL is blocking the graft from falling. That's why I like to use the glued technique. One of the reasons why I like to use a glued technique over the Yamani is you can put the glued lens up high. The Yamani lens sits down further back in the eye, so there's more space between the back of the iris and the front of the lens, so it's easier for the graft to fall back into the back of the eye. With the glued lens, the lens sits higher and it gives you more support. So here I've got the graft grabbed. It's not going to fall into the back of the eye because I've got it grabbed. And what I'm going to do is as I'm holding it, I'm going to reach in and I'm going to brush that edge open with my cannula. So it's a bimanual maneuver. I was having trouble unfolding that inferior edge. So I'm going to hold the graft with one hand and sweep it over with the other hand. So this is a far cry from a no-touch technique. But in my opinion, when you're dealing with these complicated DMX, you really have to unfold the graft by any means necessary. And if you are obsessed with avoiding direct physical contact with the graft, I think you're barking up the wrong tree. What you need to do is you want to get the graft open. And so I am not gun shy at all about grabbing it and dragging it. Sometimes you just have no choice but to physically manipulate the tissue because you'll find in eyes like this, for example, maybe there's something wrong with the chamber in one location or another. And it's just a tough to figure out what's going on and sometimes you have to directly engage the graft to figure it out. What I've done here is I put an air bubble around the graft to try to figure out what's happening here. 
In the air bubble, it's difficult to see even from this vantage point where the bubble is. If the bubble is underneath the graft or on top of the graft, here it's actually on top of the graft. I put a bubble there on top of the tissue to try to open up that little edge fold. And you'll notice that bubble interacting with the edge of the tissue. But as I expand and contract the bubble, that edge kind of irons out. So normally I prefer to do DMAC graft unfolding with no bubble, but in a complicated situation like this, sometimes you have to roll with the punches and use whatever tools you have at your, disposable, at your disposal. And you'll see that that was very effective. The bubble did iron out that edge of the graft. So then I will aspirate that bubble from on top of the graft and I'll replace it underneath the graft to lift it up to the, to the posterior surface of the cornea. So that was the key thing where the help yourself technique didn't work and directly engaging the graft with the forceps didn't work. The air bubble on top of the tissue to push open that little lingering edge was the key effective point. So I've got the graft mostly unfolded and I just put the air bubble underneath it. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, is the graft seems as though it's still inferiorly decentered. And what to do about that? Well, I think that I would prefer to be up a little bit more superior. So I'm going to reach in and try to grab the graft and drag it up with these forceps. However, what we'll experience here is something very common in these complicated eyes, and that is the graft doesn't really want to move. It seems like it's stuck to the back of the cornea, and I kind of pull at it a little bit. I see if I can't mobilize it, and it doesn't really want to go. And so rather than insisting on moving the graft up, I just leave it, okay? Because I think it is better to stop rather than force the issue and end up tearing or losing the transplant. So this is my last attempt to try to grab and move the graft up higher. And I fiddle with it just a bit before giving up because I think that if the graft is stuck so firmly that it will not move in response to you pulling on it, that it is more likely to attach and work if you leave it alone, then force it into some position in the eye where it doesn't seem like it wants to be. So here I am just trying to pull it a little bit more. I'm tapping around and I think, can I get you to move? But despite these efforts, it does not want to budge out of that location. It's totally unfolded in the back of the cornea. So rather than push the issue and force a bad situation, I stop. I fully inflate the anterior chamber with this air bubble. And that's the conclusion of the operation. We leave the patient here like this. Now in patients who are unicameral like this patient, sometimes we will leave them on the operating room table with a full air fill for a duration of 30 minutes or an hour because once they sit up for the very first time, all of the air support they have will go into the back of the eye. And so for people like that, we usually will leave them supine right after surgery for a brief period of time, 30 minutes to an hour, and then no posturing at home. So the reason I show this video is because uh, normally DMET graft unfolding is a 30 second process. You know, it's not something that takes five minutes, but it did in this case. And it was five minutes of fuddling and fooling that I wanted to show you because certainly I still have those cases where I'm fuddling and fooling with the graft and I can't get it to behave but still normally goes fine as long as you take your time and think about what's going on and have sort of a stepwise progression of what to do and what to try and what the primary risks were. In this case, what to do and what to try were determine the graft orientation with the Motsuro sign, use the help yourself technique to initially open the graft, try some centration with the coaxial forceps, and if those don't work, remember you can use a bubble to open up edges of the tissue and then lift the tissue to the back surface of the cornea. If the graft won't move, if you have it on the back of the cornea, it's decentered, just leave it. It's better to have a good situation than push it into a bad situation where you wish you hadn't done that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this is of some use to you.